Hello and welcome to Tiny Code Christmas Day 5. Today we're going to be taking a look at a classic tunnel effect. If you've just joined us, don't forget to check out Day 1. Before we split off into the platform specific code, we're going to take a quick look at polar coordinates. So the origin is at the center, the y axis is positive in this direction, the x axis is positive in this direction, and we have a line here going from the origin 0, 0 to the coordinate 40 and 40. These types of coordinates are known as our Cartesian coordinates and they are the standard XY coordinates that we've been familiar with so far. And I just want to point out that the origin for the tick 80 and the Pico 8 is 0, 0 in the top left with, the, with a positive Y axis down here. So this is going to look a little different in practice, but we'll cover that in the relevant sections. So polar coordinates are coordinates that are expressed by an angle and a distance. So instead of having a fixed coordinate of x and y, it's still represented by two values, but one value is the distance from the origin and the second is the angle. So to represent this point 40 40, if we take a look over here, that angle is 45 degrees and the distance is 56 pixels from the origin up to this point and we can express these polar coordinates then as the distance 56 and the angle 45. Now what we want to do is actually convert x and y coordinates into polar coordinates and we can do that using the a tan 2 function and a tan 2 takes y and x coordinates and returns an angle for us in radians. And you can see here again that angle of 45 degrees is 0 0.79 radians. So I'm just going to click around here a bit and adjust the angle. And you can see that when we move this around, it gives us the angle between the positive x-axis and this line here and as we rotate around when we enter the negative quadrant here we'll see that the angles are given to us with a negative number instead so we have the positive and negative in terms of the degrees that we are given So we'll start by taking a look at the tick 80 specific code. And if you're here for Pico 8, you can skip ahead. We are going to take a look at a tunnel. And the first thing you'll notice is that instead of our usual loop from 0 to 135, 0 to 239, we are in fact now going from minus 68 to 67 and from minus 120 to plus 119 and the reason for this is that the origin in the tick 80 is the top left hand side of the screen and we need to have our tunnel in the center of the screen so we need the origin for our calculations to be approximately in the center of the screen so what I've done here for the moment is I've just set c equal to 2 as a color value here we'll come back and update that in a bit and I'm just going to plot x y and c and we'll take a look and see what happens so we can see that only the top left hand quadrant of the screen is filled in and that's because it's plotting minus 68, minus 120 and they're off over here outside of the screen. So the first thing that we have to do is we need to add 120 to the x value to push it back and we need to add 68 to the y value to push it back so that the whole screen is now covered but that the x and y equal to zero value that we'll be using for our calculations is right here in the center of the screen. So, so now I'm going to let capital X equal to math.a102yx. And what this is doing is it is going to get the angle in radians based on the current point on the screen. The angles in radians based on the current point in the screen that we are current that we are looping over. 
So I'm just going to change this to X for now. And I'm going to run this and see what we get. So that has given me back the angle of that in radians. And I'm just using that angle in radians directly as the color. Now, it's important to remember that when I showed you the, the explainer of the polar coordinates, the origin was positive y. This time, this is the origin. This is positive y. This is negative y. So if we start off here, we'll see that we get the color black, which is 0. Then we get 1, 2, and then we get our 3.14 of a radian. And now we're flipped again onto the negative side. So again, this is negative y-axis here. So we're actually coming back. 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3.14. So what we want to do, first of all, is shift that around a bit. And I'm going to add math.py to it. Math.py being 3.14 radians, which will hopefully move all of this into the positive space, where we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a bit radians. So that is a much better prospect. Now, that is giving us five colors we want the full sweetie 16 experience so what i need to do is i'm going to take these values math dot eight and two plus math dot pi and that's after um shifting all of those values that we get back into the positive and what i need to do is i need to scale it a little bit and if we take the 16 colors of the sweetie 16 palette that's 16 and if we divide it by 2 pi, which is one full revolution of the circle, which will give me a full rotation. And that tells me that I need to multiply that value by 2.546. So now if I run it, I get a clean sweep of colors. So that's still not quite our tunnel effect. There's two aspects to the polar coordinate. The first one was the angle and the second one that we're going to um, work out now is the distance. So one thing that we need to do with the distance is we need to find the square root and we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem for this. And this is easy because the distance is from the origin. So if we just take the square of the x distance and the square of the y distance, that will get us the distance in pixels from the center of the screen. Now, that in itself is fine, but what we want to do is we want to use the distance from the screen, we want to use the distance from the center to manage the depth of our circle. So we're going to divide 999 by our distance. And what this does is the smaller the distance, the bigger the y value. And I'm just going to take a look at these now. It's going to plot y on its own. And you can see that we get a full sweep of all the sweetie 16 colors in and out based on the distance. So this allows us to place the color based on the distance from the center of the screen. And the radian value that we got back from A102 will allow us to change this color based on the angle as well. So I'm just simply going to add the two of them together first, x plus y, and you see that we have this lovely swirly tunnel effect where we've combined both of them, which enables us to not only use the distance, but also the angle in order to actually set the color. So in addition to the mathematical operators, there's obviously the bitwise operators that we took a look at already. And when we run this, we want to and x and y and get a cool tunnel effect. We are going to crash. Global y has no integer representation. So when we're working with our values here, we have to be careful of a few things, first of all. And I'm going to tackle this one first. y, in this instance, 
has no integer representation because y is 999 divided by a square root. It's a floating point number and I can't use a bitwise operator on that. So in order to convert them into integers, I have to use the floor divide, which will in essence remove the portion after the decimal point and allow us to work with them as integers. So let's take a look. And we have another error about integer representation. So what's actually happening here is mat.square root, the square root of zero is zero, and we are going to be visiting the origin in this. So I need to ensure that I'm not dividing 999 by zero. So if I run this now, I get this lovely tunnel effect. And you can see that we're varying the color based on the angle and based on the depth. And I'm just going to try the exclusive war one as well. And you can see that that gives us a nice even pattern. I can try R as well. And I think I like the exclusive war one the best. And what I'm going to do then is a trick here. I'm going to end C with 11. And that is going to take it so that I have the nice uh, combination of the red orange palette colors and the colder blue palette colors. So we're already at 177 characters here and there's still a bit that we can do to minimize this a bit. So for example depending on the effect and depending on what you want your tunnel to look like we can just get rid of the mat.py that looks pretty similar um, once we've gotten into the bigger tunnel type of thing. I can remove the multiplied by the 2.546 and again it doesn't make too much of a difference. There will be kind of seam issues and stuff like that where they don't add up perfectly if you want a perfect tunnel but if you're just looking for a tunnel effect and you're not too hung up on exactly how it looks then they are some modifications that you can make to save some space. Another one that you can do is instead of using mat.square root, you can instead raise this to the power of a half. And that is the exact same as the square root, and that will give us the exact same tunnel. So you have a few other tips and tricks that you can add to your toolbox. Today's challenge is to animate this tunnel in less than 256 characters. Best of luck. So let's take a look at building the tunnel in Pico 8. So you'll see here that in contrast to the previous uh, days, we are not looping from 0 to 127 and 0 to 127, and instead we're looping from minus 64 to 63 and minus 64 to 63 on the x and y axis. And the reason for that is since we're dealing with tunnels, we will want the center of the tunnel to be in the center of the screen. and in order to do that, we have to ensure that we start at minus 64, get the zero around here, and then continue on down to positive 63. So I'm just gonna take a look at how this looks so far. I have a variable called C, and I've set it to two for the color, and I'm just setting X and Y to the color. So here we can see that it's only filling the top left-hand quadrant of the screen, and we need to add 64, and 64 to that to approximately bring that into the center and fill the entire screen. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to create a variable called u and I'm going to create a variable called a for angle and I'm going to use a102 and I'm going to give it the y and x coordinate of our current location on the screen. Um, I'm going to set C equals to A for now and I'm going to run this code and see what we get. So I'm just set the variable A to the radians that it gives me back after checking the angle of the X and Y coordinate on the screen. So it'll be somewhere out around here, out around the X axis and Y axis and I set the color to the result of A102 which is going to be the angle at the current pixel is generating from the center of the screen and if I run it we'll see that we get absolutely nothing. So A102 on Pico 8 instead of returning radians returns turns. So that will give us something between 0 
and 1. So it's given you the angles as a fraction of 1. And obviously that is just going to register as the color 0. So what I need to do is just multiply this by 16. And now you can see that I have every color there represented in this lovely radial sweep. So that is our colors and the A102 allows us to set the color based on the angle. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to get the distance because setting the color by the angle itself is fine, but we need the distance from the center so that we can set the color based on a combination of the angle and the depth or the distance of the, the tunnel from the center of the screen. So pixels that are closer to the center of the screen, we want to appear further away and pixels that are um, further out towards the edge of the screen, we want them to be to appear bigger. So I am going to use the square root function to use the to calculate the distance using Pythagoras's theorem and I need to find the distance from the origin to the x and square it and then I need to find the distance from the origin to y and square that and since the origin is 0 0 that makes that fairly easy so I multiply x by itself multiply y by itself, add them together and get the square root and that gives me the distance in pixels from the center of the screen to the current pixel. So now I'm just going to set the color to be the distance and you can see now that we get a nice sweep of all the colors out but again this is only setting the color based on the distance so no matter where you are on the screen the only one thing it can use for that color is the distance. So what we need to do is combine these. So I'm going to take my angle and my distance and I'm going to run this and you can see that we get this swirl effect but it still doesn't quite have the depth. So what I need to do is I need to take the square root value for distance because the distance is going to be spread out evenly from the center to the, to the sides. Um, and I'm just going to take a constant value like 999 and divide it by that square root. And that means that the smaller the distance, the bigger this value is going to be that we can use for it. And the bigger the distance, the smaller that is going to be. So if we run this, we can see that this gives us a nice depth effect, a combination of both the angle and the depth. So in addition to that, we can also use our bitwise operators, for example, our exclusive R, our AND, and our R. Now I think the exclusive or looked the best one of them. So one of the things that I can do to increase the performance is to reduce the number of pixels that are drawn. So here I'm going to chance drawing every second pixel and that's still too much but what I can try instead is to maybe draw every third pixel. And you can see that gets us to our 30 frames a second. I just cleared the screen there so we could fully appreciate the effect. There is not, you're not going to be able to identify that as a tunnel. So realistically, that is not an option. And what we can do is actually make the screen smaller. And unfortunately, you see that we have to actually make it quite small. And I'm just going to clear the screen so that we're not seeing the previous image. So it has to be quite small before we actually get this up to being performant. So this is one of the limitations of the Pico 8, and as such, it's something that we just have to live with. And this won't preclude you from doing a full screen tunnel effect, but if you do, it will run at 15 frames a second. So there are some other techniques that we'll cover in a future video on how we can do some full screen effects on the Pico 8 and kind of work around that limitation. So your challenge for today is to animate a full screen tunnel effect in the Pico 8 in 256 characters.
best of luck. Don't forget to come back tomorrow for the next challenge.